All right, well, let's get started. It's great to have you all here. My name is Kate Kaminsky, and I am the Assistant Dean in the College of Education, Health, and Human Development. Um, my other kind of title is Director of Student Success, so I do a lot of things helping students um, get on track, get back on track, um, helping them with all sorts of different things, academic and non-academic related, but um, I kind of help with all student, all things students. So it's great to have you here. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah, who is going to, we're going to attempt something interactive and hopefully it's going to be amazing. <laughs> and if not, we'll figure it out from there. So Sarah, you're up. All right. Okay. Hold on just a second. Okay, so hopefully you all in the left hand corner should have some annotation tools and there's an arrow pointing to the right. Do you all have access to that? If you can, you can. So this is obviously the map um, of the US. And so we're just hoping if it were. Oh, perfect. Luke just did it. Okay. To find out where you all are joining us from. So fun to see these pop up. <laughs> Well, cool. All right. So we have some out of staters. We have some in staters. Perfect. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to do it again. And underneath the arrow is um, a big T and a little T, which is the text. So if you can click in this whiteboard and just type in what major you're considering that you'd like to learn more about um, from within our college. Well, that'll help us kind of figure out where everybody is, uh, is kind of leaning towards majors. Is that option working? Oh, good, okay, education. Yeah, feel free to jump in if you have a major in mind. Let's hear it. Okay, hospitality, elementary ed, secondary ed, business, elementary ed, business, Oh, good. Health and health, physical education. Perfect. Got a chat that says special ed. Special ed. Great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, perfect. Well, we will go over these um, today. Obviously, you will have um, a chance to ask questions through the chat. Um, but let me get is pulled back up all right wonderful thank you sarah for being our technology guru <laughs> that was fun we've never done that before at least i haven't so thanks to sarah for figuring out the annotation great to see where everybody is coming in from like sarah said some in-state some out of state um and it looks like a good mix so we're glad you're here um, just again, my name is Kate Kaminsky. Um, I am the Assistant Dean and Director of Student Success. Um, my doctorate is from MSU, which I got um, three years ago now, which is hard to believe it's been three years. Um, and I have a Master's in Counseling and a Bachelor's in French and Music. Um, I still use my music to sing with the symphony sometimes, um, but uh, I also do a couple of other things where I teach addictions counseling and, and do all of the diversity and inclusion efforts within our college, kind of manage those. So switch to the next slide and I think Cindy's next. Yes. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We're excited, like we said, to just visit with you tonight. 
I am originally from um, Minneapolis and lived overseas when I was growing up in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So love uh, to travel and also um, just my roots in Minnesota, as you saw. Uh, I taught inner city Minneapolis and I also taught in a small rural community in Minnesota. And then when we moved to Montana, which has about, been about 20 some years, I ended up uh, work, starting to work at MSU, which has been great to be able to work with pre-service teachers. So having taught, now I get to work with all of these, um, any students who are going into secondary or elementary ed and really enjoy my work with that. As it says on the slide, outside of work, I love to uh, be outside. Uh, it's hard not to be when you live here and uh, love to love to golf with my husband and friends and uh, Look forward to hearing more about you. You're muted, Sarah. <laughs> the official tagline of 2020, 2020. Yes, <laughs> so much for being the technology person. Um, so my name is Sarah Heller. I'm one of the advisors for the Department of Health and Human Development. Uh, I have been on campus for almost 15 years in a work capacity. I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky. Came out here for college and never left. Um, earned my bachelor's and my master's in history and thought, hey, I may as well stay in Bozeman for the summer and ended up working uh, in admissions and have been here ever since. Um, when I'm not on campus, I'm pretty much chasing around my two-year-old. And then any time, any downtime after that, I try to sleep and uh, so when I can. Hi everybody, my name is Austin Holiday. I am another advisor in HHD. Um, I graduated from MSU with a major in psychology and a minor in Japan studies. And like Sarah, I found it hard to leave, so I decided to work here as well. Um, and this May, I will be graduating with my master's in counseling. Um, when I'm not working or doing homework, I love to read for fun, um, cross stitch, going for walks, um, and I love getting to work with students every day. Hello, um, I'm Mia and I'm a freshman this year at MSU. Um, I'm getting a major in K through eight education. I'm getting the K through 12 reading minor and then I'm also getting the math option. So I'm really into the education courses I'm taking. Like Cindy, I'm from Minnesota, but I am from St. Paul. Um, here I'm on the women's ultimate team. Our name is Cold Smoke, super fun. And outside of school, I like to hike, bake, play board games. I'm always up to cook or eat good food. So yeah. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Caleb Brockmeyer. Um, I'm a transfer student at MSU, kind of your non-traditional student. Um, started school back in 2013 uh, in California and then spent the last, I um, Number of years playing professional baseball and um, obviously everything in Montana, all the outdoors, everything drew me out here. Uh, and then once kind of I settled down in an area that I liked, I decided to finally go back and finish my degree um, in kinesiology and exercise science. Um, and hoping to work that into sort of personal training, strength and conditioning um, outfit here in town. Um, and like I said, in my in my spare time, love fishing, skiing, anything outdoors. And um, if you're that's you know, you know kind of your thing, this is a great place to come out and enjoy it all. Great, thank you all so much um, for your introductions. Um, I'm just going to give a quick overview of the College of Education, Health, and Human Development. We're um, the third largest college on campus, and we have two rather large departments. So we have education, which they'll go into more detail, but basically is all kind of the teacher prep preparatory stuff, um, including some masters and some doctorates for higher education and for principalships and all of the, that sorts of thing. Um, and then we have health and human development, which kind of runs a gambit of a lot of different um, majors, which uh, Sarah and Austin will go into with a little bit more detail. But 
um, really kind of all centered around well-being. We're all over campus. We're in, I think, five, maybe six different buildings now. Um, and our main dean's office is in Reed Hall at the end of the rainbow in that top left corner um, there. But we have offices and, and faculty and classrooms kind of all over campus. Um, and, and we really enjoy kind of being all over the place. So I will turn it over to our first department, which is the Department of Education. And Cindy is going to talk to you about that. All right. So a couple things that I would just really highlight in terms of our education program is getting out and working with kids right away. So it starts early and often, which you can imagine is really critical to not only see are you, if it's something you're interested in, do you continue to be passionate about it? And is it really the right direction? And if so, then it makes it all the more exciting because you're taking education classes, getting out in the field and being able to really put uh, into practice what you're learning on campus. One thing that we've done is to, we have added up the number of hours of actual field experience. So if you're in, if you're looking at elementary ed and you pursue that, we have added up approximately 800 hours of work with youth from freshman through senior year. With secondary ed, then that is a little bit less. It's about 600 hours. And the only reason for that difference is there is so much more focus on some of the content in that secondary ed degree. So I would ask a couple things as you look at different programs is how are, when do you start education classes, which I will um, say again is like a field experience. You start right away with your education classes along with the others. And then the field experience, like I said, begins as a freshman and continues to build um, on one, on each experience throughout your years here. As you can see in the next slide, we offer elementary education, which Mia will speak a little bit to her experience coming in. The elementary education major is really liberal arts in nature. So you can imagine in your elementary school, uh, your teacher typically taught all the subjects. Uh, so that is one major. Underneath that major, it lists what we call options. And the options are a focus area. It doesn't lead to licensure, but it would show that you have extra expertise in those areas of early childhood, education, science, math, and special education. And I know um, it looks like McKinsey is interested in special education. Know that you can get the focus area. Um, some of the classes are offered through MSU Bozeman, but also understand that the additional coursework, it does include taking coursework from our sister university, MSU Billings or UM Western. Um, and then we will be happy to talk to you about how you, how you get added endorsement, which is teaching uh, special education. The middle column shows our K-12 education majors. So there's art, early childhood, and then some of your languages, French, German, and Spanish. A health enhancement major, which is, um, and last is music education, which again, those are those K-12, covering that broad spectrum from kindergarten through 12th grade. And then finally, you're going to see the last column, which focuses on those really core subject areas that are the secondary education majors that would give you license fifth grade through 12th grade. So just to let you know, General Science Broadfield covers science, the sciences of chemistry, physics, earth science, and the heaviest one is biology. It is the preferred major across the United States. Then we also have a social studies broad field, which in many states, again, is the preferred degree or major over history. And for good reason, it's you're covering history, government, social sciences uh, that can be taught across uh, the grade levels. There's also technology education, agricultural education, biology, chemistry, and physics, as well as English, history, family and consumer sciences, and mathematics. Our majors sometimes also pursue a teaching minor. So I think with the next slide, you're going to see a whole host of teaching minors, which again, you're not required to take a teaching or to pursue a teaching minor. It just adds marketability uh, if you so ch if you would choose to do that. Uh, the majors in and of themselves prepare you and you're highly qualified to teach those majors. 
Kate also mentioned there's a master's program. Um, there's a doctoral program. So again, those are things down the road, but just to give you a hint of as an undergraduate, these are uh, the majors that we meet day in and day out um, with students. And I guess that would be something that all, all of us advisors, we meet with you every semester. Um, sometimes more than that. It just really depends on how many questions you have. So that gives you a little sneak peek of the education classes. And we're going to have Mia as our incoming freshman, super rock star freshman, I might add, talk a little bit about what, what has this first year been like for her. So take it, take it over, Mia. Yeah, so I think, because looking at the map where you all are from, we have a lot of out-of-staters, which is really exciting. Um, and since I'm from Minnesota, it was, you know, a change to come to Montana, but I love it here. And the campus is beautiful. You're surrounded by mountains. You feel at home. Um, I'm currently in the dorm and it's been, it's been a good experience. Um, for coursework, um, I would, Cindy is absolutely correct. You start education, education classes right away. I think I did like educational psychology and my education university seminar. And it's just, it's really nice because you get to know education majors right away. So second semester, I went into my classes, everyone just waves, they're like, oh, hey, we had this class. And I think the community of, um, a K-8 education major is really excellent and you do a lot of group work. I will like to preface that, like a lot of the coursework you do are projects and you work um, with a lot of people, which I wasn't expecting, but I ended up, um, I do like it. Um, you do take other classes along with your education classes, so you're not always getting, you can take an activity credit if you like. I think I'm going to try to do uh, yoga next fall. Pretty excited for that. Um, <laughs> um, also, like I like I said, I'm getting the math option and then the reading K through 12 minor. So I take a few extra classes for those as well. But um, it's all very comprehensive. Um, everything builds on each other really nicely, and so you have classes that follow a sequence and you just, you feel ready. Nothing comes out of nowhere. Um, professors are excellent. I have not had a professor who wasn't ready to help or answer questions. Cindy is amazing. Advisors in this department are. Um, so yeah, I also say that like Montana MSU, is just a wonderful school. Um, there's lots of clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. Um, like I said, I'm part of the women's ultimate team and it has been just a great community here. My favorite part of the week is going to practices. Um, we haven't had any tournaments in the face of COVID, but when we start next year, I'm going to be really excited to do that as well. So, yeah. Thanks, Mia. All right, so now we're going to switch over to the Department of Health and Human Development. That's where um, Austin and I are. We also have a third advisor, Lynn, and between the three of us, we advise for the majority of the students in Health and Human Development. There's a couple of majors who are still advised by faculty, um, but by and large, like Cindy said, we're meeting with students at least once a semester pretty much from perspective all the way through graduation. So we just wrapped up graduation applications for students who will be finishing up um, this summer and fall. So um, we're with you the entire, entire way. Uh, let's get this. All right, so Kate mentioned at the very beginning kind of the, the focus of enriching human well-being for the department. And so this is our wellness wheel. And these are the five domains that our department has chosen to kind of bring in um, as part of our department is part of like looking into communities and families and individuals and organizations. And so uh, with any and all of our majors, whether they're undergraduate or um, graduate level, the majors will focus on one of these in particular, sometimes multiple areas. Um, but the idea is that you as a student and us as faculty and staff 
are interested in, um, in working with people, helping people, um, and enriching um, human well-being through our actions. Within the department, we have um, eight undergraduate majors. So this is the just the undergraduate information. Um, for those that had kind of indicated different options before, um, health enhancement is one of our K-12 uh, majors. So we work a lot with um, Cindy and David in education advising. You're taking health enhancement specific classes. You're getting in the classroom right away, um, but you're also taking education classes as well. So kind of going down both trajectories there. Um, this will come out later, and then Kale can talk about it too, because he just added a coaching minor, but we have a coaching minor that pairs very well with health enhancement. Um, the hospitality, I know one or two people indicated hospitality. It's one of our newer majors, and we have three different options. So students would declare in hospitality management, and then they would choose whether their option would be um, the food production, the um, food systems option, the restaurant management, or the lodging and facilities management. With hospitality in particular, we're pulling a lot of classes from business, so students can easily pick up a business certificate. Um, so they're combining the business aspect with the hospitality specific classes. A lot of our um, coursework for all these majors are pretty interdisciplinary. Uh, so community health, human development and family science are a couple of our more social science based majors. Um, looking at the, um, the family system, helping the community different ways we can um, make our community and individuals healthy. They're taking each other's classes often. Um, food and nutrition, and health and human performance are by far the most uh, math and science heavy options that we have. Exercise science and kinesiology are two of the options under health and human performance. And um, both those routes are great uh, options for students who want to continue on to a, a graduate program like physical therapy, occupational therapy, chiropractic, medical school, dental school, and you name it, there's probably somebody going the, that health professions route, um, but also more of the coaching, the personal training, strength and conditioning specialist certification, um, those types of things. And then nutrition, uh, we have students going on the dietetics route if they want to become a registered dietitian or the nutrition science route if they're more interested in a route towards medical school or becoming a physician's assistant that'll be based in nutrition while still allowing students to pick up the extra uh, prerequisite courses for those majors. Um, if there's other students with questions about any of the other majors, we can, you know, you can definitely ask. I want to be kind of uh, mindful of time as well. And um, this is a list of our major, of our minors. So we have the coaching minor, um, the human development minor, and the personal consumer finance minor. These three can be paired with any major. Um, so we have students from all over campus, different majors, picking up the coaching minor, picking up the human development minor. Um, we also have a gerontology certificate, and gerontology is the study of aging. And so for um, students interested in working with that older adult population. The certificate is a great option to pick up um, 15 credits, so five classes uh, that are mostly online, and you can have the certificate with that focus area of working with older adults. Um, so I'll turn it to Kale. Kale, do you, as coming in as a transfer student, kind of what was your experience um, coming into MSU? I know transfers it, it's just different um, yeah. than incoming freshmen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, me coming in as a transfer student, too, was a unique transfer where I had been kind of out of school for a number of years. Um, and I'm very grateful to have you as an advisor was able to help me kind of get kind of back into school mode, know what I needed to do, how my credits transferred over, um, and would fit in here at MSU, um, and was able to make that transition pretty seamless. Um, I know I kind of had the time, like I said, to settle down into a place, get back into school. So I was excited. I'm more of an in-person learner. So I was excited to get back in person. And of course, this whole uh, pandemic, can't, we went online. And I was like, well, I could have done online classes years ago. But um, it's been very helpful the way MSU has done it online. We've had a lot of blended classes and work together, um, which has been nice to get a little bit of face time on campus with professors and um, in a lot of our labs. I know a lot of our exercise science and the kinesiology labs that I've had a chance to go into are um, 
pretty high tech and pretty cool to see like the um, cross country skiing treadmills and rock climbing wall treadmills and stuff like that. So they definitely do have a very uh, intricate and involved uh, process and program there. Um, but yeah, other than that, like you said, I, I discovered we had the coaching minor recently after uh, taking a coaching class here at MSU and realized with um, my kinesiology major, I didn't need too many more classes added on. Um, so I kind of decided why not just another uh, check mark off my resume that'll help down the road kind of getting into that coaching area, maybe athletic um, administration, not really sure yet, still kind of feeling it out um, in that whole area. But yeah, like I said, transferring in, it's been um, it's been great so far. I love it at MSU and um, I'm definitely I'm excited to have a uh, degree from MSU when it's all said and done. Cool. Thank you. That brings up um, another point that we should talk about, too, is the transfer credits. So for any of you that have um, that are transfer students or who will be bringing in uh, dual credit or advanced placement or international baccalaureate uh, classes from high school, be sure to have your official transcript sent to the registrar's office and they can or to the admissions office and they'll get those evaluated. Um, for both of our departments, for classes that maybe don't come in as a direct equivalent, so it's just a little bit different than one of our classes, we will, um, at the department level, kind of figure out what we can substitute and what we can't. Um, so it is kind of a work in progress, even through orientation, just making sure we know how all those classes are going to be transferring over. Um, and then student success resources, I'll turn it back to Kate. All right, I don't need to go into a ton of detail here, but just to let you all know that campus in general has a myriad of support systems in place to help you. Like I said in the chat, we have the most amazing advisors, three of which are on the call tonight. We have two others um, that are equally awesome. Um, and uh, I would just say that, you know, if anything happens on campus that you feel like you need support, there is always some place to turn. Whether that person is your advisor that you feel comfortable with because they've helped you with classes, or it's me as the assistant dean and director of student success, or the counseling center, or um, you know, even academic services like math math learning center, or tutoring, or um, the writing center. There are just so many so many people on campus that want you to be successful and want to help you be set, set up for success. And if something goes wrong, um, you know that you don't know how to navigate. There are lots of people to turn to. So that's what I'll say about that. The other thing that I would say about EHHD is that we have. Um, a lot of money in scholarships that we give away every year. I think last year we gave away about $186,000 worth of scholarships. Our scholarship process is really, really easy um, because you fill out one application, you share with us who you are, and then we have a committee that, that looks at all of the scholarship opportunities and decides, okay, this person fits into this scholarship, this person fits into this scholarship. It's a really easy process. Um, and so that process opens every year on November 1st, I believe and closes um, at the end of January, beginning of February. And then you find out within a few months once those scholarship um, committees have had a chance to, to decide um, which scholarships go to which students and all that. So I would just add that, that that's a really, really great opportunity within our college. I'm trying to think, what's the next slide? I think it's um, oh, yes. Um, yep, you can you can switch. <laughs> um, the other thing I would say is there is lot there are lots and lots of ways to get involved on campus. Um, we have over 250 student clubs and organizations, which is incredible. If you are interested in something and there isn't a club or organization, you can start one, which is really, really cool. You just have to find an advisor and another person. Um, and uh, and so there's lots and lots of ways to get involved. Um, somebody I was talking to a student a couple of weeks ago and she's like, I got to find a club and she found the board games club and was really excited to, to start playing board games with people. So um, so that's an option. Um, are these scholarships able to be stacked onto a WUI? I don't know the answer to that. I know that there um, there is an issue. Um, sometimes with over aiding students, quote unquote, if a student has kind of maxed out their financial aid, we may not be able to give them additional support, but it, I'm not quite sure how WUI works um, as far as kind of how that would work together, but I would say apply and see what happens. Um, all right, what's the next slide? I think we've got some specific to HHD opportunities that maybe Austin can talk about. No, 
Austin's not going to talk about it. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so the Department of Health and Human Development also offers undergraduate research opportunities for several of our majors. Um, and with these, students can work closely with faculty members on projects and research that they are also interested in. Um, so depending on if you want to also work with older adults, if you're more interested in um, like the cross-country ski team that Kale mentioned, um, you can work with a faculty member who is also doing research in that area um, to collect data, run tests, um, and also to work with them to create presentations like this one or um, contribute to research articles and even present at national conferences. Um, so if you are interested in something like this, you can work with um, your advisor and we will help you get connected to, to a faculty member who's doing research in the area that you're interested in. Um, and there's also a couple more options um, down at the bottom there of, uh, areas that faculty are um, looking into, including like food security, um, nutrition and exercise, motor control, community health, um, as well as the influence of technology on human development and family relationships. So lots of different um, areas to get involved. Awesome, thanks so much, Austin. Another thing that I would just mention is that we have a new program that we rolled out last fall called the Alumni Ambassadors for our college in Education, Health and Human Development. And if you go to the MSU webpage and you just search EHHD Alumni Ambassadors, it's the only thing that'll pop up. We've got about 10, 10 people um, that are alums that are willing to talk to you all as prospective students, or if you come in and you're current students and you just wanna get an idea of what could I do with a major in and what are you doing? And let me make this connection. It can be really good for networking or also just understanding a little bit more about what you can do with your, your major um, once you're, you're out in the world. So some have videos, some just have contact information. They want to be contacted by current and prospective students. And so I would just encourage you to take a look at that and, and, and those people with different majors if you, if you feel like you want some more information from somebody who's been through it. Another thing, follow us on social media, please. We send out all sorts of really good information. Um, we are doing spotlights on different faculty and staff and students. Um, and we also share a lot of really important information once you get here as a student, um, important deadlines and everything else. So check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or on our YouTube channel. Um, all three are very active. And then last but not least, here is our contact information for those of us that are on the call. Um, and if you have any questions, um, we've gotten a couple in the chat, but we've got about 10 minutes left and we'd love to have you put more questions in the chat if you have them. Um, and let us know, let us know what you what you're you're wanting to know tonight. Maybe we won't have any questions tonight. <laughs> That's okay. That's totally fine. Um, our contact information is easily findable on the web as well. We can stick around for a few minutes, I think, if people have questions. Um, we're, we're booked until 545, so we'll stick around. But thank you so much for coming tonight, for engaging with us. Um, and we're really excited that you're considering MSU and considering the College of Education, Health, and Human Development. We have awesome people totally biased, but I think we have the best college. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, we'll stick around if you have specific questions. Otherwise, go cats. <laughs> have a great night, everybody. Mackenzie's got a question, and probably that is for Cindy. Can special ed be paired with a K-12 degree? Yes, it can, Mackenzie. It can actually, the special ed can go with uh, any of the majors, K-12, 512, or the elementary ed. And, um, I would be happy just with details. As I said, it's really a combined program, not only with Montana State, but then it's looking at other routes. And some students actually get the degree first and then go on to a master's. Uh, so there's different routes that you can look at, uh, no doubt. And a great field, by the way, as you probably know, it is, there are so, many, so much um, need for special ed teachers. So I'm excited you're thinking about that. Yeah, that's awesome. And we do love to answer questions, so keep them coming. <laughs> Still have 21 people. 
Which makes me think that they all have a question, but they don't want to ask. <laughs> it looks like there was a question in the chat that came in private privately talking about registering for classes. Do you want to maybe talk about what that first advising appointment looks like at orientation? Great question. I'm going to leave that to either Cindy or Sarah or Austin. Actually, sure, I'm sure the thought. students could answer that too. Kale or Mia. Right. Let's let's let Mia go. Are you yeah, do you yeah, want to take that Mia? That That's great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um so like orientation was online um this year and so I met with Cindy via Webex and I had actually recently changed my major from construction engineering to K3 education. So I didn't know a lot. I'm going to be honest, but Cindy like laid it out. She was like, I think you'll do these classes first semester and these second semester um, made me feel really confident and capable. And recently we just planned out um, my classes for the rest of like college, which is also just super nice to like know where I'm going, what I'm going to be doing, the classes I'm going to be taking. So I say advising important appointments are amazing that first one gets you into gets you excited for classes and you're going to meet your advisor which is really fun so that's great thanks so much mia and with the orientation too you'll for this summer the orientation itself will still be online um and then once you finish with all the online format you'll set you'll schedule a meeting with your advisor from whichever department you're going into um, and that's where we really look at, okay, what did you transfer in, if anything? What um, is your math placement? Because that would determine classes um, for the next semester. And we really get you set up with a, for this, you know, for fall, we get you set up with a fall plan. Um, and then from there, everything just kind of builds, builds on that. For transfers, it's a little bit more difficult to kind of lay out the rest of your time right up front because we may still need to you know, check with faculty on, on um, approved substitutions and that kind of thing. I'm going to actually answer question came in about these because it's a great majors. What opportunities are there for working with students the freshman year? And so, as I mentioned, it starts early. There's an educational psychology class that gets students in uh, to do some service learning. And uh, some students, for example, may do a CAP, be a CAP mentor which uh, requires an hour a week. Uh, so that is a significant number of hours, but there's a wide range. Um, some don't want have the time to give that much, so it will vary in that regard. And then it builds sophomore year, as I said, and then into the junior and senior are very heavy. The difference between, uh, the second question is, how does our program differ from Montana Western? And you're right, not one program is better than another. It's really about what's the best fit for the student. The what Montana Western is uh, set up in a block schedule, so um, they're only taking a handful or uh, two classes, I believe, in a block. Correct? Can someone else nod, Sarah? Do you know if it's two classes in? Uh, I'm it's not a, sure. It's it's a very small number, maybe even yeah. one over okay. like certain number of weeks. Yep. So that that's um, going to be a very focused area on just one or two classes. Whereas, of course, with um, Montana State, they we recommend 12 to 15 credits, generally speaking, 15, so that the it's a four-year program. And again, I would ask the question, what, as I started in the beginning, is the real important questions for an education major when you're looking at different programs. How, number one, when do you start your education classes? How do they build on one another? And how much field experience do you, do you get? And what does that look like? Those would be the questions that I would ask. Awesome. It looks like there is one more question that came in privately to me. Uh, the question is, I live in California. How do the teaching credentials in Bozeman differ from the California credentials? And what is the process about going through all of that? Great question. Again, licensure will differ from every state. And if you go to our education advising website, we actually have a link to all the teacher ed um, offices across the United States. We do recommend students should gain license in the state of Montana. It's a very, it's, uh, as I've heard, is 
of the most economical in this, across the state. Um, and it is the reason why we say we recommend doing that is that it is oftentimes uh, easier as you as a candidate moves to another state to gain license if they have an initial license here in the state of Montana. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, I believe that looks like all the questions that came in to me privately. Um, I do want to say thank you so much for all taking the time to join. And if you have any closing comments you'd like to make, feel free to do so now. But other than that, thank you so much to both the presenters as well as the attendees. I think this is an awesome event to learn a little bit more. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks to our panelists, our students especially for taking time. You guys rock, we're really glad you're here. Um, thanks to the advisors and thanks to the admissions office for putting this on and giving us the opportunity to talk about EHHG. Hope you all have a great night. Thanks everyone.